In this short lecture, we're going to go over the concept of the LE effect. Now, I have a picture here of prairie dogs. As you might see, they're very cute, and they will help us illustrate what we are talking about here with the LE effect. But before we do that, let's describe a little bit what we're talking about, and then we'll come back to these cute critters. First of all, what happens if density dependence is goes the other direction from what we were talking about in the last lecture. In the previous lecture, we talked about how birth rate might decrease with increasing density, probably due to resource competition as the density of conspecifics as of competitors goes up, we might see the birth rate decrease because uh, all these individuals are competing for resources and uh, you know there's a limited pie and with uh, more uh, individuals it's going to be um, you know uh, free for all and some individuals will be left out and not be able to get the uh, full amount of resources and uh, may not give birth at the same um, rate as they would have if there was unlimited resources. Same with death rate. We talked about how death rate might also increase as, as the density goes up, again, because potentially resource limitations might cause mortality um, or there might be increased disease with increased density. So we can imagine multiple scenarios where death rate might go up and birth rate might go down with increasing density. But what if the other thing happened? What if as density increases, the birth rate might go up or the death rate might go down. That is, the vital rates become more favorable to population growth as the population increases. That's called positive density dependence. What we talked about last week is a stabilizing uh, negative feedback. Um, and sometimes it's known as negative density dependence. Negative density dependence because as the abundance goes up, the vital rates become less favorable. The opposite is positive density dependence. As density goes up, the vital rates become more favorable. That is what we mean by uh, the Ali effect. The Ali effect is the name we give to positive density dependence. Now let's think about what positive density dependence might actually mean. Now, in general, the easiest way to think about it is to think about a very social species, like these prairie dogs. In prairie dog colonies, individual prairie dogs will warn each other if a predator is approaching. And with the more eyes there are looking around for predators, the more likely that one of those eyes is going to see a predator. So the, the denser their population is, the less likely they are to be caught unawares by a predator. So that's one way that prairie dogs uh, might actually have fav more favorable vital rates as their densities go up. In addition, prairie dogs will clip the vegetation around them, again, making the uh, visibility greater and allowing them to see predators and potentially warn each other about those predators. The more prairie dogs there are, the more they are able to clip the, around, the surrounding vegetation and the more visible predators will be. And so again, the higher the density of prairie dogs, the more favorable the vital rates are, the, less, the lower the death rate is. So in general, when we talk about positive density dependence or the Ali effect, we're talking about the positive benefits that populations can get by being social, by existing in social aggregations, all right, like prairie dogs, for instance. The Ali effect is named after Warder Clyde Ali, who was an eminent ecologist of his day. He specialized in animals that engaged in social behaviors and aggregations, and his contribution that we remember today, although he made many contributions to ecology, what we remember him for today is the Ali effect, which is this positive density dependence where it, which is relatively common in nature and whereby vital rates are 
uh, more favorable to population growth as population gets larger due to the positive benefits of social aggregations. Um, interestingly, this is a total aside, and it, it's kind of fun to read a little bit about Warder Clyde Ali. He's a fascinating person. And he, his interest in social cooperation and aggregations among animals actually spilled over to, to his life in many ways. He was a devout Quaker. He was an anti-war activist, an advocate of social cooperation, not just in wild populations, but in humans as well. Um, from the Wikipedia article, which I recommend you just take a look at, Ellie saw ecologists as social healers who were able to provide a naturalistic foundation for ethics through their research. So pretty interesting character here is uh, Warder Clyde Ali. And before we move on to the insight maker activity associated with this uh, concept, the Ali effect, um, one of the most famous examples of a possible Ali effect involves this this bird, which you may recognize, it is not, it, it does not currently exist, unfortunately. It is the passenger pigeon, which went extinct at the early part of the 20th century, although it was functionally extinct pretty much by the end of the 19th century. And uh, this is a museum specimen. I believe this is uh, Martha, the last, I, I could be wrong. Um, I think the last passenger pigeon's name was, was Martha. Um, but this is a, a museum specimen that we see here. And why do we talk about the passenger pigeon here? Well, the passenger pigeon went extinct, and part of the reason it went extinct, we think, although we can't be sure, is that it, is, it was a very social species, highly uh, gregarious, lived in huge, huge flocks, and they benefited from their ability to live in huge, huge flocks. And uh, when humans hunted them almost to extinction, they hunted them past what could be called a threshold. And I, I might call it an Ali threshold, where the social aggregation, uh, the benefits of social aggregation kind of broke down. They, they didn't have as much uh, ability to, to live in large flocks because their density was so low. And uh, not having those benefits of being in a large flock, they were more vulnerable to extinction. So the passenger pigeon may be one example of an Ali effect and how Ali effects can actually be detrimental to conservation because once a species gets to low enough densities, they are unable to um, persist. They basically don't, they, they're not able to uh, be social and derive benefits from that sociality and therefore are just destined for extinction. And, and the smaller the population gets, the more the social fabric breaks down and the closer they get to extinction, to an inevitable extinction. So that is... Uh, the passenger pigeon. Um, it's interesting to think back about uh, this this incredible species and how um, a species that was once so so common is is now extinct. And it really is a, uh, a story that should give us pause as we look at species that are common today, and we think maybe the chance of their extinction is, is negligible. Well, the passenger pigeon was once one of those species and it is extinct. So we do have to think about those types of species as well. So let's just take a brief moment and go through the history of the passenger pigeon. Uh, first of all, we'll start with how abundant they once were. Um, Aldo Leopold said uh, in his day, and this is uh, the, the early to mid 20th century, men still live who in their youth remember pigeons, passenger pigeons. Trees still live who in their youth were shaken by a living wind, but a few decades ago, a few decades hence, only the oldest oaks will remember and at long last only the hills will know. 
the passenger pigeon um, at one time numbered perhaps over 3 billion, it has been estimated, for 3 billion uh, individuals living at one time, um, which is pretty insane. We hear stories of people who, who saw the, the skies darken with pigeons flying overhead. Well, the pigeons were also hunted for, uh, for food, um, and they were often hunted using very wasteful methods. Since they did aggregate in large aggregations, um, it was fairly easy. People would f flock themselves over to where the passenger pigeons were feasting on mast crop, that is uh, chestnuts and acorns. Um, and uh, the passenger pigeons would be feasting all together in huge, huge numbers, and humans would come and, and kill them in all sorts of um, gruesome and wasteful methods. After many decades of this hunting, the passenger pigeon was hunted down to a small fraction of what it once was, and perhaps, and we'll never know, but perhaps the social fabric broke down and the Ali effect caused the final extinction of this species. All right, so hopefully what we can do in uh, class this week, and uh, ideally on your own as well, is just uh, go through an insight maker activity that involves simulating the Ali effect, and um, hopefully it'll become even clearer how um, powerful this effect can be and how devastating it can be when populations um, get below a certain threshold. Um, before we do that, let's visualize the Ellie effect in the whiteboard. And so what, what we're going to do first is just visualize in a couple ways. Now, we've been talking about density dependence. And so density dependence usually means we're going to put the density on the x-axis and put vi some vital rate, um, either R or B, little b, per capita birth rate or per capita death rate on the y-axis. And so let's think about these three different uh, quantities or variables. Um, let's think about R first of all. Now previously we we kind of had this R max, and R max being the, the maximum growth rate of the population um, at the low densities, and then the um, vital rate R would go down as density goes up, and at some point it would cross a zero threshold, which is zero growth, meaning it's an equilibrium point, and that occurs at carrying capacity. And so that's what we've seen before. Now let's look at the Ali effect version of this. We have our population density or abundance, and we have an R max, but at some threshold, we'll achieve our maximum. This is where the um, social fabric is in full swing and so all the benefits of um, social aggregation are felt at this level. So this is our max and we have this maximum occurring not at zero density but at some intermediate density. Now um, we can call this the Ali threshold here. Um, I'll call it LE, should capitalize the A, but um, LE threshold here. All right, and above that threshold, we're going to see just what we saw before. Now, uh, there, there still has to be some kind of negative density dependence in this population. They, you know, the, the individuals will crowd each other out at some point, so we will start to imagine a negative density dependence. But below this threshold, social aggregation or social um, be behaviors start to break down and the benefits of those social interactions starts to break down and you have a negative effect going this way too. And this here 
you can see is called negative density dependence. Negative density dependence because as abundance gets bigger, the vital rate gets less favorable to population growth, R goes down. And here, this is called positive density dependence. Positive density dependence because as abundance goes up in this region, the vital rates become more favorable due to positive social interactions. Now, let's imagine we have zero here. This is R equal to zero. Now, this point here is an equilibrium point, and that is carrying capacity. That's where the population will end up stabilizing, hopefully. But this is also an equilibrium point. That is, R is equal to zero. The population is neither growing nor declining. And below this equilibrium point, you see that the growth rate is negative. And if the growth rate's negative, the population is just going to get smaller, right? And so the population is going to get smaller, and the growth and R is going to go down more. The population is going to get smaller, and extinction is the inevitable. Um, this n equals zero being extinction is the inevitable endpoint. Let's look at Alley effect one more time before we do our insight maker activity. And so I'm going to, instead of looking at R, let's look at B and D. All right. So just like always, density dependence, we're looking at density and how a vital rate, in this case B and D, are affected by density. Remember, previously we saw that we had this maximum birth rate and the birth rate would kind of linearly decline. This is our logistic population growth model. And the death rate would increase. We have this minimum most favorable death rate and the death rate would increase as the abundance goes up until you get a certain, you reach a certain uh, equilibrium. And that is carrying capacity when birth and death are equal. And so that is the model we'd been thinking about before. This is our logistic population growth model. Now let's think about it in the Ali effect world. So now we have density and birth and death on the y-axis. But now the maximum birth rate is going to occur at some intermediate density. So now we have B max maybe up he happening here, not at really low densities because of the benefits of social interactions. So we have B max up here and D min over here, but these are not occurring at the lowest possible densities. They're occurring at some intermediate density. And as density goes up beyond this point, we're going to get the negative density dependence. So birth rate's going to go down. Death rate's going to go up. And we're going to get this equilibrium point where birth and death are equal, and that is carrying capacity. So everything should look familiar here. That's carrying capacity there. But beyond, below this threshold, the birth rate is going to start to go down again because the social fabric is going to break down. Right? And the death rate is going to start to go up again, potentially because of breakdown of social interactions. So vital rates become less favorable. This over here is all negative density dependence. Vital rates become less favorable as density goes up and you reach a carrying capacity at some point, probably due to crowding, uh, competition for resources. And over here, this is positive density dependence in this region, where the vital rates as density goes up in this, in this region here, as density goes up, the vital rates become more favorable. Death rate, um, <laughs> this is birth. So birth rate goes up and death rate goes down in this area, and then birth rate goes down in this area. Death rate goes up in the negative density dependence region. Note again, there's another equilibrium point here. 
This is a critical equilibrium point because below that equilibrium point, the population growth rate is negative. The death rate exceeds the birth rate up here. Death rate exceeds the birth rate and the population is destined for extinction. Um, if you draw this out for yourself, you should probably draw this using some different colors because I was just noticing it's hard to tell when this is death here. This is the death and this is births here, but it would be really useful if I actually colored it different colors. So, so if I made the birth rate blue, for instance, the birth rate against this, there it goes down when the social fabric breaks down and it goes down here as the abundance or competition goes up and I make the death rate red. Now, this should be easier to, to see, I would hope. Um, death rate minimum, most favorable death rate is here and of course would go up as competition occurs but might also go up as social fabric breaks down. So that is uh, another way to visualize and probably a better way to visualize um, this this process. Hopefully this makes sense and hopefully will make even more sense after we go through the Insight Maker demo and uh, have a chance to discuss this in groups. All right, now before we end this mini lecture, I want to go through the Insight Maker demo. So let's go back to the website and you should see um, as you scroll down the website, we have this in-class exercise, Ellie effect, and instead of starting from scratch as we've been starting from through most of our Insight Maker demos, we're going to start off with a basic logistic growth model like that looks like this. So let's um, grab this model here. Oops, sorry. This model here. It should look like, like this. This is our basic density dependence model with explicit per capita birth rate and per capita death rate, each of which is negative density dependent. That is, as density goes up, the birth rate goes down, death rate goes up um, according to a simple linear formula based on an intercept and a, and a slope, intercept and slope, intercept and slope. So that is the model we're gonna start with so before we go in and, and change some of these parameters around, what I'd like you to do is to add a new variable and make this variable, we're gonna call it the alley threshold. All right, and the alley threshold I can move in here and I'll set it at 200, all right. So, and that's just what it says to do in, in the website. So if we check that out, oh, and here we can just scroll to where it says, set this constant equal to 200. So that's, we've done this part, we've added a new constant called the LE threshold and set this at 200. Let's also um, try to set the other parameters where it states here. Initial abundance should be 201. Density dependence on birth, the slope, um, should be 0 0.004. The slope for mortality should be 0 0.001. Max birth rate should be 0 0.8. And minimum mortality should be 0.3. So let's try to remember that and implement that. Oops. So we're going to start this population off at an initial population of 201. Um, might, uh, this, this is, a box turtle isn't really a great example of an LE effect animal. It's not really in social aggregations very much. So let's, instead of using box turtles, let's do prairie dog. So we'll change that, make sure that these are properly updated. This is now turned into prairie dogs, that's good. Um, we have 201 prairie dogs to start off with. Um, the maximum fecundity uh, was 0.8, which is exactly what it is here, 0.3 for more, minimum mortality, which is good. Um, and the vital rates, uh, the slopes were 0.004 for birth and 0.001 for deaths. 
0.004 here and 0.001 for this term. All right. And um, because <laughs> I just realized I should have cloned this before I made changes. So I'm going to clone that now and call this. I can rename this the Ellie effect model demo and I'll save it. Um, hopefully I will go back and remember to go back and restore the settings on my previous model <laughs> so that I don't have the Ellie threshold in there. Um, and it remains kind of a baseline logistic growth model. So sorry about that, but let's resume where we were. I think we have the, the rates here correct. Um, LE threshold is 200. Now we're going to uh, make a link between the LE threshold and the uh, per capita birth rate and the per capita death rate. So that's the first step. All right, the next thing that we should do here is to implement the Ellie effect in the per capita vital rate um, equation editors. All right, so we're going to start with the birth rate. All right, so the birth rate, the way we had it before in the negative density dependence or the stabilizing uh, feedback model was we had this maximum fecundity at very low densities. And then as density increased, the, the per capita fecundity would go down according to this slope term, all right? Now, instead, we're gonna make it a little more complicated here and we're gonna use an if then else or a conditional statement. So we'll go to the programming functions, if then else, and we can get rid of this middle condition. So we're just gonna do if something's true, then we do this, else, we do something else. And so the condition we're testing here is, let's go back up, um, is whether the prairie dog population is less than this LE threshold. All right, so if the, if the prairie dog population is less than the LE threshold, then we have positive density dependence. Otherwise, we have negative density dependence. And I can um, copy this expression from before in here and we'll modify it just a little bit by, now we're saying it's density dependence, it's negative density dependence to the extent that the prairie dog population is greater than the um, LE threshold. So, um, you know, if the LE threshold is 200 and the prairie dog population is 210, we're only gonna reduce the max fecundity by just a little, or the fecundity will re be reduced by only a little bit because it's only a little bit above that optimal level of 200. So don't feel like you have to understand exactly how this equation works. Just know that this here represents negative density dependence, just like the logistic population growth model we've been talking about. And then here, let's copy this up here, but we'll modify it now to represent negative or to, this represents positive density dependence or the LE effect. So if the population's below this LE threshold, we're gonna have positive density dependence. That is fecundity is going to go um, up with increasing density or um, down as it gets farther away from this optimal level, this, this LE threshold, which represents kind of the level where the um, Fecundity is at its maximum because of the social benefits. And so if we just flip this around, we say prairie dog, or the LE threshold minus prairie dog here. Um, and this equation here just represents this positive density dependence or LE effect idea that as the population gets further away from this optimal level of where social interactions are most beneficial, the fecundity will go down um, as the population gets smaller. Um, so the population, the fecundity goes down from this maximum if the population gets bigger above this ideal threshold and if it gets smaller below this ideal threshold. So let's hit apply there and we'll do the same thing with deaths. So here we will add 
the programming functions if then else get rid of this middle run the condition does the population is it less than the le threshold if it's not then we can basically use the same negative density dependence formula that we've used in the past and instead of um, just the prairie dog in this uh, within this parenthesis we'll just subtract that from the le threshold and that should work but if the population is below this le threshold then we can reverse that and say le effect minus prairie dog so the mortality becomes um, less favorable that is higher mortality as density increases above this ideal point um, this le threshold and then as the population gets smaller sorry uh, yes yeah, the population declines below the le threshold um, the mortality rate will also um, go up all right so that should do it so if, if you hit apply and simulate we should see the population goes up to 300 and if I reconfigure this I don't have to visualize this LE threshold in here um, and I can just fiddle around with this um, this slider bar in fact maybe I'll just change the slider bar so that we have a little more leeway so 1000 maximum if the populations above with that uh, is starts off really high it goes down to 300 it starts off relatively low goes up to 300 but if the population starts off quite small it does not go up to 300 instead it goes to extinction so we'll work more with this model in class um, hopefully this makes sense so far and um, we will uh, run through some of the exercises and the top hat exercises related to this exercise uh, all together um, in class. And I'll see you then.